Hey, this is the Fight Nerd. Joining us now is Christoph Szczynski, who is going to be taking on Stefan Bonner at UFC 110 in Australia. Christoph, how's training going for this fight? Oh, training's going fantastic. Uh, I finally get a full camp for my fight. I have to have it on short notice, so I'm uh, really excited about this one. 14 weeks, uh, full camp, uh, great training partners, uh, great coaching. Um, uh, it's going to be a great fight. Now, who's working with you for this fight? Uh, for this fight, uh, I changed a few things. Uh, I, 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 we, uh, myself and my training, main training partner, Lou Pauly, Division One wrestler, uh, we went together to uh, train with Alliance, uh, Brandon Barron's gym, uh, Phil Davis, um, Brandon's out there, uh, Joey Beltran as well. Uh, just uh, a lot of great guys who are who are helping us out get ready for for our fights. Now you mentioned you, you got yourself going on a nice long fight camp this time around. It must be nice to, for once, or at least recently, to, to actually have a fight where you've got some notice and not be coming in as a late replacement for something. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know what I mean? Uh, for my last few fights, you kind of have to uh, go from zero to 100 right off the bat in your training camp, only having, you know, uh, five weeks for one fight, three weeks for the other. Uh, this time, I just think we could take our time, kind of focus on what we have to do in this fight, study our, our opponent, study the tapes and just decide on a great game plan for the fight. Uh, are you guys doing anything special for Bonner, or just more the usual? Um, you know, uh, the, the key of this fight is going to be definitely the conditioning, the cardio. Um, uh, he, he's a gamer. He's going to come out swinging. He's going to come out battling. Um, every fight he's in, no matter what's going on in that fight, he's always coming forward and, uh, and being aggressive with everything. So, uh, you know, I mean, condition is going to be a big factor in this fight. And uh, I feel that with, uh, with the 14 week camp that I've had uh, and the training that I've had, uh, I'm going to be 100% ready. Now, a lot of the newer fans of the sport know you from uh, the eighth season of Ultimate Fighter. And uh, do you think that if you weren't on that season of Ultimate Fighter, would you still have made it into the UFC, or would you still be kind of fighting in, in the regional promotions? Um, you know what? I, I, I was pretty close uh, before the Ultimate Fighter. I, I, I figured I was on a nice three. Uh, I think it was a four-fight win streak or something like that, a three-fight win streak. I, I, I felt that uh, I'd need another maybe one or two big wins on my record before I get into the UFC. Uh, and then the opportunity of the Ultimate Fighter came on, so I took that opportunity. But, but, I, but I'll, de I'll de definitely tell you that I, I really felt that I was really close to a UFC contract uh, before the Ultimate Fighter. Right now, a lot of fans like myself and some of the older hardcore fans will remember you from the IFL not too long ago. And a man that you had a rivalry with over there, Ben Rothwell, he's going to be fighting also at UFC 110, taking on Mirko Krokop. Now, how do you feel about a rematch with Rothwell, since I believe uh, that you faced off against him twice, and both times you're on the losing end of those fights? <laughs> Yes, well, uh, we matched with Rockwell again for a third time. Uh, I don't know, him being in a heavyweight division, maybe even a light heavyweight division. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, the reason, main reason why I left the uh, the heavyweight division to go down to a 2 or 5 because I just felt like I was way too small and he's such a big, powerful, strong dude. He basically put, put, put me in place and took me down to 2 or 5. So I'm kind of happy where I am at and I'm glad that he's at the, two, uh, at the heavyweight. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, it's working out for him. It's working out for me. Everything was good. Now, I mentioned the IFL. Uh, do you still hang around with any of your buddies from the LA Anacondas? Um, I, I speak with a few of them uh, once in a while. I see Jay, uh, Jay Huron once in a while, Alex Schoenauer as well. Benji Raddick comes up to uh, Team Quest, and then I go down sometimes to Huntington Beach area and train with him as well. So he and I can stay in touch a lot. So I definitely talk to some of the guys, absolutely. And Buster and I are always good friends and always will be friends, and uh, I, keep it, I keep in touch with them all the time. Are there any times where you just kind of miss certain things about the IFL, or are you pretty happy right now with the way UFC treats you guys? The UFC, I'm very happy about. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I was treated extremely well by the IFL. Um, you know, I mean, the great organization that took really care of the fighters. But uh, I'm, yeah, I'm getting the same kind of treatment with the uh, UFC, and uh, I'm very happy where I am right now. All right, good to know. Now, as a native-born Canadian, you know, you've seen a lot of mixed martial arts really boom over in Canada. Uh, what's the fight scene like over there? I mean, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, anybody who's been to the UFC in Montreal <laughs> knows how crazy that is. And I experienced it first time myself at UFC 97. It was probably the, the craziest thing I've ever experienced in my life. 10,000 people at the weigh-ins, you know, 22,000 pack fans at the, at the arena. Paying that the whole time, too, not just for the main main card. They were there for the pre, uh, the, for the pre preliminaries as well. So uh, the atmosphere and the main fans are great in Canada. There's a lot of shows up in Canada all over the place. And uh, it's just it's growing bigger and bigger every time. You were born in in, uh, in Poland first, right? And then you moved to Canada? Yes, yeah, so I was born in Poland. lived in, lived in Poland until I was 10 years old and then moved to Canada. So are, are you familiar with the uh, mixed martial arts scene over in that part of Europe? Uh, a little bit. I get a lot of uh, emails to do interviews. 
uh, uh, request to do interviews, to talk about uh, about Yusuf Pajinowski and, and his uh, and his last fight or his first MMA fight and stuff. I was actually even asked to fight him in Poland, so it was kind of funny. And, and why do you think this worldwide appeal is happening with the sport of mixed martial arts? Um, I think I, I think I think I man, it's, uh, how, how do I how do I say it? I think it's just just because what's now now with boxing, how corrupt it's become, and just how kind of stale it's become. Uh, the people are looking for something new, something fresh. Uh, and when this sport started, uh, just just kind of exploded on the scene. Uh, and now now everybody's everybody's watching on pay per view over there in Europe or in different they're in different continents of the world, and uh, and slowly getting exposure. And people more people and people are sure turning into it. Uh, and I think that's what it is. Just the exposure of it's here in the states and Canada now has grown into the exposure in Australia, Europe, uh, Asia, everywhere. So uh, and it's getting just bigger and bigger every time, every year from now on. It's going to get bigger and bigger. I think we're going to. I think like UFC alone is going to be basically, you know, all over Europe and uh, all over different continents in the world. Now, a little known fact about you is that you were actually a pro wrestler before you got into mixed martial arts, is that right? That is correct, yes. Now, what made you jump over to mixed martial arts? Um, well, um, I had a chance to go down to Calgary, Alberta, Canada, basically the mecca of uh, professional wrestling in Canada. I had a chance to train with uh, someone by the name of Bad News Brown. Um, any any hardcore wrestler knows who Bad News Brown is. Yep. Uh, uh, a very solid wrestler. He used to uh, be a, uh, uh, I believe he won the bronze medal in, in the 79 Olympics in Montreal in judo. Uh, spent a lot of time in Japan working on jiu-jitsu and, and shoot fighting. And basically what happened was during one of his training sessions, he makes his students uh, roll, grapple. I really didn't know what that was. I wasn't really too into mixed martial arts. I didn't really watch too much of the, of the fight uh, of the US, early UFCs. And he basically showed me a couple submission holds. I got hooked immediately. Uh, I basically took up jiu-jitsu right away and kind of just worked my way up. And six months later, I had my first MMA fight. And the rest of the same is history. I, I became a mixed martial arts fighter. So how long were you doing the pro wrestling stuff before you actually decided to start training mixed martial arts? Uh, two and a half years. Two, two and, and a half years of pro wrestling, did a lot of tours across Canada, um, uh, sort of the, the central provinces, uh, Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and, uh, and, and traveled around a lot of shows and then took up mixed martial arts after that. What was your pro wrestling name? What was your finishing move back then? Uh, my impressive name was Ivan the Smashing Machine, and my finishing move was the Spear. All right, excellent. Uh, can you uh, can you do the finder a favor and cut a pro wrestling style promo on Stephen Bonner right now? <laughs> I know. No, it's oh come on. <laughs> I cut wrestling. That's all right because I couldn't cut a promo. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I was so I was I left, that's the only reason why I couldn't get anywhere with the professional wrestling because my my promos were terrible. I just couldn't have that mic, the ability to just come up with stuff on top of my head, and that's the reason why I basically kind of gave up on that and I pursued something else. But uh, if I could do it, I would do it for you absolutely. But I wasn't very good at it. So <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself on on uh, on radio. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Now, assuming you win this fight, what's going to happen next after Stefan Bonner? Uh, you know what? Uh, I don't really look too much ahead of what's going to happen after. Uh, I have a really tough fight ahead of me. I'm just going to focus on this fight, and then afterwards, whatever the UC throws at me, we'll, we'll take it one step at a time, and then just go from there. All right. Uh, if you like, you can go ahead and thank your sponsors for this fight, too. Um, yes, sure. That sounds fantastic. Uh, Skin Industries has been with me since the beginning. Uh, thank you so much for for, for everything. Uh, Popeye's Nutrition, Living Habits Tattoos. Uh, thank you so much. And most importantly, um, actually all my fans back home in Canada, uh, back home in Poland. I have a lot of actually family and friends in Australia. Looking forward to meeting everybody. Thank you so much for the support and help. All right, Christoph, thanks for your time. Oh, thank you so much, Matthew. Take care. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. This video is sponsored by Skin Industries, dominating fashion for the past 11 years with hundreds of designs for men, women, and children. Skin Industries is your everyday lifestyle clothing brand. Start living in skin today and check out SkinIndustries.com.